In this video, we're going to start looking at what could be called quantum dynamics. And so, uh, so Griffiths says that so far what we've been looking at could be called quantum statics. But uh, now we want to look at quantum dynamics. And so what that means essentially, uh, well, quantum statics means essentially that our potential here doesn't change in time. Uh, but if we want to do quantum dynamics, then we have to look at a potential that changes in time. And so in quantum statics, like I said, our potential doesn't change in time. And so we can solve the time dependent Schrodinger equation like this using separation of variables, where this is the spatial part of it, and then this exponential here is the time part of it, where the time part of it will end up canceling out when we do the, the Born rule and square it like that. And this could be solved with the time independent Schrodinger equation, which is mostly what we've been doing so far. And uh, then we can form linear combinations of these stationary states. And so we can get uh, we can get wave functions with more interesting time dependence. And so we end up with these uh, these linear combinations like this. And so we have this uh, C, C sub n term here, which is the probability amplitude for the nth wave function. And these are probability amplitudes that when we square them and add them together have to come up equal to 1 because you can't have a probability greater than 1 and you can't have a probability less than 1 because you have to account for you know all of the possible states. And so if we want to look at transitions, so transitions between states, which is quantum dynamics, and we need to look at the time dependent potentials. So where the uh, potential as a function of time is not just equal to the uh, potential as a function of space here. And so to do this, we need time dependent perturbation theory. And so if we look at uh, sort of a simple system, a two-level system, where we have the unperturbed Hamiltonian, which is this uh, h with the uh, zero here. That's not an exponent. That's just an upper index there uh, acting on our two states, which are psi sub a and psi sub b. Then we get these as our, uh, our time-independent Schrodinger equations, which are the sort of zeroth order uh, perturbations here. We're assuming no change in the potential here. Uh, and so these we're saying are orthonormal, where uh, if we have our psi sub a and psi sub b, so uh, put in for each of these, then we get the Kronecker delta, which means that the we have to have psi sub a uh, in psi sub a here or psi sub b and psi sub b here for this to be one otherwise it goes to zero and so without our perturbation uh, our zeroth order approximation uh, with the time dependent Schrodinger equation will look like this so we have these time terms here with the energy of A and energy of B and the probability amplitude of A and the probability amplitude of B here. Then we add our first order perturbation, which is this to our Hamiltonian, which makes both of these a function of time. And so the probability of finding the particle in some state will change with time. And so these have to become uh, functions of time. And so we put these functions of time on them here. And so then we need to find what these functions are. And so say we have the system at time t equals 1 where it's definitely in, uh, in state A here and definitely not in state B, but then at some later time it's definitely not in state A and definitely in state B, meaning that we underwent a transition from state A to state B here. We can then solve for these probability amplitudes using the time-dependent Schrodinger equation uh, and the perturbed Hamiltonian. Uh, so we have our Hamiltonian here, which will be equal to the unperturbed Hamiltonian plus the perturbed Hamiltonian here. 
And so when we are uh, doing this, uh, when we're doing the acting this Hamiltonian on our wave function here, we're acting it on both of the states here. So the linear combination of those states here. But we've said that our Hamiltonian is this, uh, the zeroth order plus the first order Hamiltonians here. And so we can then distribute this, uh, we can just sort of foil it into here. And so we end up with our two zeroth order here and our two first order here acting on our states A and on our states B. And so for each term, we then have to take the time derivative of anything that has time dependence, which are the, uh, the probability amplitudes and these time dependencies here. And so we end up with this big, long, messy looking thing. But uh, so I put these things here in green and these things here in blue because we can do some simplifications. So recall that this, these are the uh, zeroth order right here. And so that means that these here in green, uh, we can just uh, distribute these energy terms into it here so that we end up with this right here. Then if we distribute this red i h bar into this into this second or this uh, into these terms after the equal sign here, it will cancel out with these I, negative i h bar here on these blue terms. And so we end up with these right here, which means that uh, we have this for the uh, the a state minus this for the a state is equal to zero. Then the green b state minus blue b state is equal to zero. And so we can cancel out these terms uh, on here. And so we can simplify that to get this right here. Then we take the inner product of the entire equation with the uh, bra vector for the a state like this. And so see, we have the Hamiltonians here uh, acting on this A state uh, and on the B state. And then here we have the A state and B state. So when we take the inner product of that, we end up with this right here. But we see that this, what I have here in this gold color, is just equal to zero because these are orthonormal. And so we can cross out this state because that goes to zero. This is just one because of the orthonormality on here. And so we end up with this right here. So this is the only term on the right side of the equal sign that, that remains. We can then clear up our notation a bit by just defining these as being this uh, this h of i this h sub i j here and so this one will become this h sub a a and this one will become this h sub a b right here then we divide through by this i h bar e to the minus i e sub a t over h bar. And so we end up with this right here, which will cancel because that will just become one. Then this right here, which is the same as uh, just uh, making this a plus sign and bringing it up into the numerator like this. Uh, but then this times this will, or this times this will just be the uh, superscript or the exponent of this minus this, and so we end up with this right here. Uh, and so we have this equation right here, which tells us this uh, the, the derivative of the C uh, of sub A here is equal to this right here. If we did the same thing, taking the inner product with the bra of the B vector, we would end up getting this right here, where we see that the difference is we have this H sub B B here instead of this H sub A A here. Uh, and then we have this H sub B A here rather than this H sub A B here, though that shouldn't matter because these are Hermitian operators. Uh, but the diagonal terms, uh, so uh, 
these often vanish, especially in what we're going to be looking at, which are these sin the sinusoidal uh, potentials, uh, which are what we end up seeing when we are doing emission and absorption of photons. Uh, and so these uh, these diagonal terms go to zero, and so we only have the off diagonal terms. And so what we end up with is these right here, where our our two diagonal terms have gone to zero. And so we have these two right here, where we see that the uh, the derivative of c sub a here is dependent on c sub b, and the derivative of c sub b here is dependent on c sub a. Uh, where these two equations, uh, we can then find the c sub a and c sub b for the nth higher order terms by iteratively plugging in the nth minus one term into the right hand side. So, uh, for instance, we could put the zeroth order c sub b in here and find the c sub a for the uh, for the uh, first order. Uh, term here, and then same for the C sub B here using the C sub A, and we'll actually look at that uh, more in the next video. But these here that I have boxed in red are how, are how we will be finding those uh, those probability amplitude uh, those probability amplitudes for our time dependent Schrodinger equation. Uh, but anyway, that was looking at the sort of uh, perturbation theory to find these these probability amplitudes for our Schrodinger equation. We will explore this in a little bit more detail in actually the next few videos, but uh, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.